mic mic one tech tech good evening community investors amc investors bbig investors uh gme investors sundial investors bbby investors bb investors i have actually a funny uh story about the uh, day trading uh, blackberry <laughs> just waiting on more people to jump in so we can start this chat to talk about today and it's gonna leave leave you feeling so good i'm sure of it how are you guys or how are you doing today <laughs> Got the hookah going too. Like there's no way I'm missing this life. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys like, or do you have any questions about what happened with AMC today? And I actually want to hear. I want to hear. Um, what you guys have to say about what do you think happened with AMC today? A lot of things happened. Uh, <laughs> they're basically putting it on the feds, but don't worry, we're going to be talking about this. They're trying to get everybody to forget about the uh, the fact that you know we closed above 1550 last week and that is uh, a huge 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 it had a lot a lot of uh calls on it and most likely you'll see that um reflect into the market tomorrow if you don't see it reflect into the market tomorrow then that's what happened today evolved radio <laughs> smoking yep shisha That one was for you, uh, she, uh, radio, revolving radio. Sixty-four. Any truth? They can't let it go. Twenty-two, uh, because after, after that, they can't afford it. Um, well, first of all, what's up, Nickel Slick, um, and um, ATGJ? Uh, no. There is no, there is not much truth to that. I'll tell you. I'll get into this a little bit more now. Rob, what's up? Just sitting down, having a beer and eating supper. I have no idea what went on today, but hopefully you have good news. Um, we're 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 gonna get into that. I have I have I have uh, the news is uh, well. Actually, I'll tell you now. I'll tell you. Uh, do one for Nickel. Here, well, here it goes, Nickel. Just for you. What's up, Panilo? Mario, how are you doing, brother? Um, Rob, the the good news is is to be expected to be seen tomorrow because while everybody is worried about what the Feds were saying today, um, and I'm gonna get into that in this live. Um, everybody seems to forget about the fact that we closed above 1550, which had a lot of calls on it, and no share buys yet have occurred today. So, um, you know, nickel, you got it. Um, so you see it, it's, 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 it's to be seen tomorrow, maybe that they have to transition and get those shares to be bought today. So you're going to see it happening tomorrow but if you don't see any of that happen tomorrow then we got we got we got something else to talk about <laughs> which is the market going off the rails completely <sighs> what happened to the doj <laughs> they pop up when 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 the when the media sees sees that fit perfectly and they don't and they go away when when the media don't want them to come on 
We appreciate you too, Mar Mario. You're, you, you're one big piece of this group. <sighs> Waiting on the rest of the gang or everyone else to join in. Um, and guys, please uh, remember, if, if, if you just log in, please to uh, please go ahead and like the video so we can push it out to more and more people so we can get into the subjects, um, you know, sooner. I, I, I don't mind repeating things, but, you know, it's, it's just it's just better when we tackle it all at once for everyone. So I'm going to start off by saying the, <laughs> the, the crazy part of how the feds, when they come out, I stated in my previous video that when they come out to make these uh, um, so-called meeting and announcements, um, they they come, it's like a holiday day for the uh, the institutes because the institutes love nothing more than everything. All the media is paying attention to what the feds are saying, and they can go ahead behind the scenes, obviously, and uh, make a lot of calls and make a lot of positions on just about any stock and since they know in a way they kind of know the narrative of what what is being prepared because we at this point a, a, a stupid man just just about a stupid man would know that all all, the, all these people are correlating with each other um you know the fact that the feds have not dealt with the interest rates and they have not dealt with the inflation for all this long um, it's not because they did not really know, as they've been saying for the past, that this is just transitory. Um, there's no truth to that. Like, like I said, like an, a stupid person can can know much better than that. I mean, come on, guys. They call us dumb money, and we are the ones that figured out that the inflation was rising and that it was going to be too crazy to handle at any given point. Uh, almost a year ago, so like a year in advance. While the smart money, well, so-called the people that are in that job or hired specifically for that job, the ex experts, have been completely wrong all along. And he came out today and said inflation is way too high and he fears that it might be too crazy and um, all that kind of stuff. So guess what? Well, no shit. We knew this way long, too long ago. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy that that narrative is still pushing out and, and being sold on the newspapers and on the on the media like it's new stuff you know which in a way is new stuff to the non-investors who are also make the bigger percent of the united states of america you know if you if you were to do a chart on how many investors are in the u.s um as far as retail i wouldn't be surprised if it's less than 10 uh, 10 percent you know, which means the 90% or over the net, that 90% of the rest of the country are kind of just, if if they tune in to these uh, Fed meetings or anything, they're going to be like, okay, well, I'm listening to him and that's what he says. Everyone else, I remember like last uh, year when I was telling all my friends to watch out for the end of 2021 and then prepare for 2022. Um, and telling them all the craziness that would happen throughout this year and last year, they were looking at it like, oh, you're a conspiracy, uh, you know, you're a conspiracist and you're making conspiracies. Where in reality, we're living in them today. And now they're all like, oh, yeah, well, he did say that back then. We should have listened. Well, <laughs> that's, that makes up for the majority of the country. Uh, What's up with that document building? Uh, which document building uh, evolved radio? Lion, what's up? How are you doing? Okay, again, guys, I'm not, I don't promote smoking, it's just a bad habit, personal bad habit. Um, 
I also am not a financial advisor, <laughs> neither this is financial advice. So let's look at, let's dive into, let's just begin diving into what happened really today, okay? So today you see the markets, especially BBIG breaking out in the pre-market, right? And we're gonna get to that story and the little cool thing I told you guys, I would say. And you seen even AMC, even the rest of the stocks looked like they were gonna go up. Now, the feds come on and everything starts tanking. Then things start rebounding after two o'clock. Wow, I wonder what happened then. There was a reverse repo transactions that happened. And <laughs> yes, it's true. One trillion point, uh, one trillion seven hundred and forty-two billion dollars, which means it's still on the rise. They're still putting easy money out in the market. Um, Bartlett, Illinois. Um, Evolved Radio, are you talking about the TD Ameritrade apparently um, or s proposed uh, the related the, that fire that's related to uh, TD Ameritrade? And Zycom, how are you doing? What's up with you? Yeah, um, whatever is connected to TD Ameritrade. See, here's the thing. I've, I've said my opinion on it and my piece on it from before. Uh, truthfully, right now, it, it will just literally come down to just being a conspiracy because if there was anything, and most likely there was <laughs> anything to do with that, with, with, with that uh, incident with TD Ameritrade and Citadel and colluding and a lot of illegal trades and all that stuff, it's all burned to the ground now, you know? And honestly, I would not be surprised. And this is, again, this is just an you know, an opinion that I'm throwing out there. Um, I would not be surprised if, again, the government was going in and saying, hey, guess what? This all stuff are incriminating and terrible stuff. You need to get rid of this, you know, until they get to a clean slate that they can actually come out to the media and present it. Because, again, this whole thing is so much bigger than just one hedge fund or a market maker or all of us. This thing is huge. Uh, the amount of shorts when this whole thing, when this whole thing years down the line is said and done, um, we're all everybody's gonna look back and say like, wow, like like there was hundreds of stocks that were shorted to oblivion. Um, that next thing you know, you saw like you know that 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 logically no one could could pay for or fund, uh, but it was just nothing but institutions gone mad. Um, and now they're at the mercy of the government. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And they will push it down to that point where like in 2008, what are you willing to do? They're going to put the government in a position where are you going to bail this, the, this economy out and basically reward the criminals that got it there in the, from, from the get go? Or are you just going to let the economy and the whole country go to ruin? That's, that's where they're going to take it to. Um, and I think they, instead of, the 2008 saga, the only difference um, is that the government knew that this was, was go this is what, what they're trying to lead them to. And then, so that's why the prolonged period of trying to come up with as much money so that at least when there's a run up, when there is a squeeze on your favorite stock, um, it can be a presentable one, like some numbers, not like a, a 15 to $22 or $25 run up. Uh, something respectable, I would say. But we are here to change all that, of course. Now, again, guys, please all try to, uh, if, if, if you like these chats, please like the video so that we can push it out more and more people. Um, and Zycom, calling BBIG. I've been telling you guys about that. Uh, in fact, on the Mass uh live that I attended, uh, attended last week, um, there was quite a few people there in the chat, not the guys, uh, that were labeling, you know, BBIG as one of those pump and dump stocks. Um, and truthfully, for this moment right now, it is. But as far as a long term play, like years down the line, it's a company that is that is building to be a monster. That's just this is just that whatever, however way you're going to look at it, that's just how it is. Now I do, I did hear that apparently today Trace Trades may, took a position in it. 
Um, if you've been part of this channel, you would have already been enjoying the uh, lower uh, prices of the stock because obviously I've been telling you about that weeks, if not, if not a month ago, since, since ever I changed, whenever I, I started this channel. Uh, so you guys have been already, um, you know, on that loop. So apparently Trace Trades also have taken a position today in it. Um, you know, we have he has a big following, so a lot of people will, his people will follow along and go into it. He did also mention that, you know, he was not going to take a, a long-term position in it. He's just trading it as a trade. And me listening to that little uh, piece that he had on that BBIG, um, he's, he, 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 he seems to obviously not know a whole lot about it. But he did mention that he just read the little thing about the cryptide. And if you've been about in this channel, you would have known a lot more than that from me about the uh, BBIG than just the cryptide uh, part and, and how it works also. I would even prepare you prepare you for what the spinoff is, which we'll talk about on this. Um, Julius, you think is going to still head downward um, or is this market going to get stronger? Okay. Julius, logically, or in this market, there's two answers to that question. Logically, this market should be down. It should be tanking. It, sh it should be crashing like all over the place, okay? Now, that has almost nothing to do in a way with our favorite stocks, especially AMC. And the reason for that is because people are not selling. And 90% or more, as far as we know, of the float is owned by us, which means the second we, did not, we decide on selling the stock, majority of us decide on selling the stock, that's when you see uh, the stock either drop, of course, if selling, then dropping. Um, and we are in a different bubble in a way because we are over leveraged on. So like the other stocks, while they're not shorted to oblivion like this, when they're going down, then we are on the opposite sector where if you short us already, they have already so much, so many shorts on it. The more that they short, the more they dig themselves deeper and deeper in the hole. You see what I'm saying? So we're in a way a little different because we are over leveraged on. They're over leveraged on our positions. So it's in their best interest to keep the market looking like this so that their other positions do not hurt and fall down in value, which means their overall portfolio, because they don't just hold shorts against AMC, they hold positions in almost all the other stocks. When those guys, or, th or those stocks in this case, fall in value, the overall portfolio that those hedge funds or institutes are holding drop in value as well. So as they just drop in value, guess what? The bank is looking at their short positions, which means if you have if you fall within that margin uh, requirement, then you're going to get marginalized. Now, they did get margins many times in the past, but they have been able to come back in and put in whatever net money necessary to take it out of that margin uh, situation, which if you want to know where they're getting the money from, there's so many ways. One other partner hedge funds. Uh, they're all friends, you know, at the end of the day. You've seen what Melvin, uh, hap what happened with Melvin with Citadel, um, you know, in the past at least. They gave him money. Um, you, they also get money from banks. They can go get more loans from other banks. They can also get it through, they've been getting it and still getting it through the reverse repo operations because no one is monitoring the dark pools because that's how it's all spinning in that portfolio. And that's why the feds are raising hikes, but yet dumping a lot of money. It's kind of like someone who's hitting the gas and the brakes at the same time. Does that make any sense? It's crazy image, right? you like, you hear the engine revving up, but in the same time, the tires are, you know, locked in because you have your foot firm on the brakes makes no sense. You gotta let one go of the other in order for this vehicle to move ahead. So if they really wanna tackle inflation, they have to stop this re repo and reverse repo transactions being at all these like all time highs, being this high. And yes, that will immediately, when they start doing that, that will immediately cause a drop in the stock market and in overall in general, whether S&P, whether Dow Jones, whatever, whatever you want it, uh, your favorite other stock, its cousin, all of them will face that. But the good thing about that is when that goes down, you know what else starts going up, 
because someone else will be forced to cover their positions on that short. Julius, hopefully that answered it uh, on the spot. <clears throat> Sorry, I dropped my hookah hose. Da, da, da. Do you honestly think anyone will go to jail? Uh, yes, they will. They, uh, they need, like we've mentioned before in our channel, guys, they need sacrificial lambs, okay? Some, some, someone or some ones have to take the fall for everyone, but under negotiated terms, like terms that don't bother their uh, <laughs> their freedom, you know? They can still enjoy their uh, millionaire and rich status and, you know, have fun as, as they want. Now, here's the thing, though. If these things, if something happens along the lines of someone doesn't want to play ball after they've all been agreeing to that ploy, and then let's say someone doesn't like the fact that they're the one who's been chosen as the sacrificial lamb for this, uh, things could change at any time quickly. They could they could go to plan B, and plan B is <laughs> shit hits the wall all over the place. Uh, crash it for crypto. Uh, yeah, well, if once once that crash, I, well, here's the thing, Evolve. If 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 when crypto crash is because there's money coming out, and when crypto crypto crash, I also see that being the same time that we will be rising. Um, they will have a lot of media talking stuff about cyber. Some somehow some people hacked crypto wallets, and I, I can just tell you from now, when crypto starts dumping, it's not going to be because obviously they're going to say they're cashing out their positions to cover their stock positions. No. They're going to be putting it out as, oh, such and such got hacked, so therefore it dropped. You know, they utilized that in the past when they say, remember block, block for, uh, that Blockify uh, site? There was one of them, just one incident. I'm just giving you an example where they hacked that site and they stole like, uh, it was like 200 or 300 million, I forgot, like worth of crypto out of those wallets or there. Um, so, so you're gonna have media along that along that line coming out to say that while crypto is crashing. Well, reality has nothing to do with any of that. Um, Danette, how are you doing, Danette? Uh, first of all, before I even read your comment, thank you so much for making that video that you did. I was, I was very proud. Um, glad you did it because it's bigger than just the fact that you know that any one of us come out. To, to talk about it and, and share their piece. But in, in the same time, it lets everyone else who sees it, who also is an investor in the movement, know that it's not just, you know, their YouTuber or favorite YouTuber that is talking about it. It's everyone else just like, just like them that's in it. They're not the only ones in that position. So for you to come out and, you know, talk and make that video, I was really happy and really proud. So shout out to you and kudos. So you said, thank you for BDIG. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad that you've been a subscriber since day one with the channel. So therefore you're able uh, to, uh, you know, utilize that info. Uh, glad to 2X my position when uh, when you momented it. Uh, sold a couple of hundred shares today at 320. Don't worry, still have uh, some shares in my moon bag. Hey, I'm so happy to also hear that. Proud of you. This is good to know. Um, Again, once you when you knew more info about BBIG through this channel, and you being a very valuable uh, asset to the channel, obviously as well, you knew a, a whole lot of time in advance than everyone else that are jumping around the hype right now. The hype is coming out right now, okay? So you knew ahead so you jumped in at a much better price point and now you are in a position where every where, while everybody was jumping in at the high two and at the uh three dollar mark you were already enjoying the great 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 uh price value and now you were able to do something like that whole selling a couple of hundred shares uh at 320 and having some money on the side i'm assuming um to possibly utilize it for something else, whether up in your position, I know that you have positions in GME uh, or AMC. Uh, again, no one can fault you, uh, fault you for that because why? That's the same things I do. You know, this is how you get your positions bigger in the companies you want to invest in bigger, guys, is by doing so. It's not only about outside money coming in. Sometimes you gotta let the 
original amount in your account become bigger and bigger so you can invest from within your investment. It makes sense. Um, and you said, yeah, Jerome always messes it up for us. Yeah, they. I mean, Jerome comes out and acts like, you know, it's all new news to him. But I just tackled it, you know, and I hate talking about the feds even more and more because it's just so annoying that they come out and say these things and talk about we won't be afraid to be even more hawkish in the future. Like, dude, this is what the market needs now. The longer you go on like this, uh, the worse the crash will be. It's imminent, guys. The cra There has to be a crash after a big pandemic shutdown that happened there's no such thing i've explained it in a video before if you get injured there's something called downtime you know you have to heal even if you go to whatever doctor they can they can be they can downgrade uh, your uh injury uh like your downtime as much as they want but there's no such thing as no downtime and we have not had that from the pandemic instead we all just been going up like oh yeah let's go up like the market is real perfect and where in reality nothing in this market is fundamental or makes any sense you know so i would definitely be careful about taking long-term positions at these levels in the market you know um <clears throat> lion no i have not watched uh amc bigham's video but to be totally honest lion I have not watched any Bigums at all. I hear about him now more uh, than I heard about him in the chat with the uh, when I was at the Massalorians last week. But I have not. I don't do too much reading uh, or listening to other YouTube videos because here's my thing: when I hear something that I don't, not necessarily just agree with, or I know for a fact is wrong. I can't hold it in. I get so emotional about it, and I just like I want to change it. I want to fix it. So I've had that with a lot of YouTube's uh, YouTubers, and therefore I was like, you know what? I can't do this. Like uh, whether it's listening to Lou sometimes, um, and most of the times it's probably for entertainment, just to see, like you know, just because he, he, you can't deny it. The guy is ha, does have a uh, a, a, com a comic side to him. But everyone else, there were some chats that I've been in, like, and I've seen some other videos where it was a letdown. Like the videos that they're promoting were was nothing but them trying to just, I guess, get crowds or move people's emotions. There was there was many bad stuff. But if you if you if you all like if if, if many people in this chat go ahead and say like yes 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 like A B. You know how I invest in my, my mentality on things. So if you think Bigums is worth it, worth watching, and you think it, he is on to something, then I, I will go ahead and start watching that. And maybe I can come back and, you know, tell you guys my two piece. What's up, Joe? So why is the credit union safer than the bank? Banks are uh, they're all crooked. Yeah, of course. Uh, so is the cre credit union. I mean... This this makes so much okay. This makes them so much money, guys. You gotta remember the banks are what controls an entity uh, or a country or a region because whoever controls the power, the money controls the power. Um, that's why it's the, you know if if you were a huge investor, I don't know if you guys watch Billions, the TV show, but you guys could know that even billionaires would dream to have a bank because that's like the club of all clubs in the top level to get to. Um, you become, you get to a point when you are a banker or you own a bank or a charter that you are almost untouchable. You know, they're just untouchable. They will, even if you are dead and wrong, they'll find a way to, to get even anything, to do something to get you out of it and get someone else implicated. Even if they have to implicate someone else, they will do it. it, it being a banker is, is super, super strong. And, you know, they pay for all these uh, politicians to be, you know, voted in or not. And they pay for all their campaigns. So who do you think if the if that congressperson uh, or congressman or congresswoman, if they've been drinking straight out, the, out of the tit of a hedge fund uh, manager or some billionaire here and there or some banker, you know, if their whole campaign is from the grace of that person. Who do you think they're going to pass regulations um, in the favor of who? 
you know it's, it's just terrible i feel like when a congressman or a congresswoman go is going to office they're going in with the mentality of how much can i get before i go out <laughs> again not uh not political advice <laughs> scapegoat yeah <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, tomorrow's earnings call for HYMC. Any predictions or expectations? Um, so, honestly, I would expect the, uh, the 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 earnings to be like saying that it was very terrible because they were they were they were not really getting any sales or anything going. Um, in the past, but they're going to make it sound so much better toward the end at some point, similar to what they've been doing as far as earnings reports for GME or even AMC, you know, oh, all this has been like, like bad, 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 like we losing on over the year, uh, we've lost this much, but compared to pandemic levels, we're better. Um, and looking forward to the next two, three years with the investment of AMC and Sprout that, you know, the billionaire guy, um, it looks is going to be great. So that's all you can see from that. Now, as far as it moving up or down, it's 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 up to seeing that point, like at that point of that day, which is tomorrow, seeing what's going to happen. If you're trading, by the way, if you're trading those kind of stocks as a long term investment, then you should not even worry about like you know any of these earnings because as H, as far as i see hymc you're looking at a long time down the line before you can see it in a huge huge position like whether it's in two three hundred x you know percent above where it is now but if you're looking at it as just a trade then you have every day you have positions to go in and points to get in and get out every day there is uh positions and i and that's where how i treat that one that kind of position, uh, I see it as a, um, or that kind of stock, I see it as a position that I can just go in and get out as a trade. Uh, I don't see myself holding because the most important thing to me that is tied to is AMC. And that's where I will be holding my, uh, obviously my position and my, my, my feet will be on the ground with that. I haven't taken a puff the whole, this whole time. Pablo, we are stuck selling uh, burning rubber. Yeah, with the moment, and, and you guys, uh, there was a few of you that uh, I suppose went and made some comments on the Federal Register um, about the ATS regulation that we were talking about yesterday that I was bringing up to you guys for these past few days. And the comments are due by April 18th. Um, and trust me, before I was able to post that link, it took me a while to try to ultimately get to that link, um, like in like the closest as possible. And even then, after I posted it, you still have to go to one more step as far as finding that regulation, which is very easy. You just have to scroll down to proposals, scroll down 10 uh, issues, and you know you can find it and press on it. But they do not want these things to get out. Again, guys, according to me, again, I'm not a financial advisor, I personally wholeheartedly think that all the mess is in the dark pools. And clearly, obviously, there are some people that know that as well. And they say that it is in the dark pool. But what I'm saying is if that breaks, if they stop getting the, uh, if the institutional investor, investors stop getting somehow straight to the uh, feds and drinking from that repo and reverse repo transactions money, then all this thing comes to an end. There's no way they can pay for any of their positions to be contained or anything else unless there's outside forces giving them money, pumping money to them. Rob Nugent. Uh, thank you, sir. I do me and I definitely, definitely will do, uh, keep, uh, keep on doing DD for everyone. Um, and I appreciate you as well. Uh, Danette said BTC is moving. Uh, anybody can put in, you know, Bitcoin, um, 
price right now on this on the screen that would be great i can tell you you guys remember in the videos we were making I kept telling you that this is nothing but a swing swinging cash for them so when the market was dumping and going down today everybody's thinking like so where's the money going at that time crypto was just consolidating it stayed within the parameters of one to two percent whether down or up um it didn't even reach that much it was just consolidating most of the time and now after you guys tell me what the price is you would see that that is true like you know they moved the money from the stock that was taken out from majority of the stock market and they start dumping them now since there is no stock market open excuse me there is crypto market open and they obviously start jumping on that ta -ta 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 -ta. Wasim, um, how you doing? Welcome to the chat. Uh, do you think the squeeze will uh, this will squeeze in April? Uh, there's a huge chance. Um, I mean, like I said, if they don't push this whole dark pool uh, ATS reporting and having the SEC being the sheriff over, all over it, uh, and Joe, no, I'm not smoking opium. Hell no, man. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's called double apple. That's the flavor of the hookah that I'm smoking. So yeah, um, so if they don't kick that down the line to even further, then I would anticipate it to be even sooner than the 18th because there's no way they will let, like, think of it like this. They could been committing so much crime and the crime is all in the dark pool. Let's say the investigators of the SCC. The SCC... Uh, the SEC jumps in, you know, the, their best interest is not to have the crime in the crime area, you know, so they want to cover, hide the knife, hide the evidence. Um, you know, they can do, they've been hiding evidence left and right, whether it's in that burning building, whether it's um, in, in, in brokers accounts, whether it's whatever, whether it's within the transparency rules with, with all the position holders. One thing they can't hide is the dark pool transactions because that is the their only source of income their real main source of income to continue pumping this crap into the market to continue to make it look like they're shorting everything and you know getting away with it and having all these synthetics in there because they're all hidden in those dark, dark pool transactions i mean they don't sit if you remember the setup of the dark pool um and, and, and the repo and reverse repo transactions, their setup is 24 hours. So one day they go into the feds, they do a repo, 24 hours later, they return to the Fed and they do reverse repo, you know? And that's and that's what it is. Uh, so 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 when that is is when that when that when so when that crime it will, let's say the SEC does pass all that and the comments are listened to and all that stuff. They're not you, on the on the day of the 18th when they get that the approval to do all all that to to sh like to target all dark pools that trade whether government securities only or both regular securities or government securities. Then by then you're gonna start seeing that dark pool transactions for the stocks instead of them being at 70 or 80 or 60 percent. You're going to see them back to normal places where there's 10 percent but when that happens guess what also does happen you're going to start seeing crazy surges on the stock your favorite stock whether it's amc bbig gamestop bed bath and beyond i can never say bbui because there's like three b's behind each other so i end up saying either four or five uh, or blackberry or nokia whichever one it is or sin which I've been telling you guys is also a very, very, very sleeping monster because they did everything in the book to that company. S-E-N-N, -N, uh, also known as Naked uh, Brand from before. I mean, they did a reverse reversal to it. They, they did a um, ticker symbol change. They did everything, everything in the book. They already did that. So now that all that have happened, it is primed to go through straight, straight through the tunnel. So we'll see. Um, Let's see. So it seems hopefully it does happen in April. Um, Pete, can you give us scenarios of the squeeze? Yes, I will. I think I just gave you one 
on how to gauge when the squeeze is about to begin. Um, because again, the most important aspect to this whole puzzle and this piece is in the dark pool and how and their ability to utilize that so they could get to the repo and reverse repo transactions, which you see on a daily base is one trillion and seven hundred and forty two billion dollars. This is one business day. And by the next day, they were able to come back, return those, uh, return that amount of money in one day and get all their uh, assets back, which is basically their junk. And that's the main reason why the feds have not been unloading their balance sheets, because they have nine trillion worth of balance uh, worth worth of things. But it, right now, the hedges and the institutes need them a whole lot more. Kenny Spoo, what's up, man? I haven't, I haven't seen you in a minute. How you been? Uh, so Danette said it went from 41K to 41.9 uh, in five minutes, now back down to 41. <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, Danette, this, this is just basically, uh, this is what, it's like cons consolidating. That's the best thing you can, uh, that's the best name for it. It's consolidating. It, they're just consolidating at this level right now. Um, again, I don't see no... Unless you see a massive, massive drop in the market, I don't see a massive gain for crypto market as of yet until doomsday come around, which is when this nightmare that we're dealing with is over with. And that's when crypto can move unchained, you know, forward. I personally think that. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, guys, but that's just my opinion is that they, they're chained. The crypto market is chained down uh, because of this, because it's tied up to a lot of this. It's just due to the money. That's just it is. Money at the end of the day is the answer to everything. Let's see. Joe said, not FUD, but the ape father said retailers are selling due to discourage of clickbaits. Now, here's the thing, Joe. First of all, you never, in this, on my channel, none of you guys have ever have to worry about having to clarify your position, your stance first, you know? At the end of the day, this is stock market. This is not your, how can we cater to your feelings market? You know, it's not what you wanna hear, it's what realistically is happening, okay? So, but you said that that's what Ape Father said. Now, as far as I know, and I, like I said, again, I don't watch many YouTubers at all, uh, and and as far as I know, <laughs> uh, I had I heard that you know Lou had a situation with that guy, and as I think I seen his they, like he posted his video like his picture once making fun of it with you know with the Lou I movement, um, and I think that guy is uh, if he's saying that, then guess what? Uh, I can say that <laughs> what does he have to. What does he have to follow that? Like, according to what? What is he looking at to see that the retail is selling? Because as far as I see, the stock has very low volume. If people were selling, do you know how many millions of people holding shares of AMC? If a group of people, since he is, it made it to that guy's attention, whatever, that ape father guy, if he made it to his attention, that means a big percent or a big amount have sold or started selling their positions. So if that's the case, you would see it on the volume of, of the trades, of the trading, of the, in the trading volume of the stock. So you don't even need to go ahead and listen to him and see who he said, who he talked to or who he heard it from, um, especially if he says, if they say, trust me, bro, then, you know, that, that, that's all to it. I don't even need to tell you more about that. But no one is selling. Um, there is obviously always every day you'll see some sales here and there. Some you know, some people will sell some. Some institutions institutions will sell some, uh, but it's normal. In order for someone to buy, someone has to sell. Uh, the idea that there is a lot of shares still sitting to be purchased is stupid when it comes to AMC or even GameStop or even even BBIG guys like. Uh, I've, and I've been saying this, like, you know, or Send Dial or Bed Bath & Beyond. Like, all that what's happening when you see in the trading volume, and that's why even 60%, I mean, today we have 35 million, 34, 35 million in AMC. 
uh, volume. Once you realize that over 60% of that was traded through the dark pools, then you can come down to the real numbers right there, like just, just on an estimate. So 60% of 35 million, come on, where's my math people? What is 60%? And it's been, it was over 60%, but we're just gonna take the conservative number, okay? So we're gonna take 60%. 60% of 35 million is, so 15 is half of 30, 17, 34. So you're talking about nine, like anywhere between 19 to 21 million of, of the shares traded today on a publicly traded exchange uh, ticker symbol was traded through the dark pool privately. So you want to tell me that the ape father made that video talking about people have been selling and what selling what 13 million shares. And that's total of to like selling and buying. So he clearly, whoever this ape uh, daddy is or whatever, um, clearly this is just a clickbait or a channel based on follow me, please, and I'll keep you entertained. Let's see. <laughs> you see here, even Kenny's pool. If Kenny's pool is telling you ape uh, uh, father is a joke, if he's telling you he's a joke, he's a joke. Uh, he did, see, there you go, Joe, he did say he was a comedian, so there you go, yeah, De clearly not a very good one, <laughs> uh, are you going to try to live stream through, during the squeeze, uh, Rob, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and I I've been thinking about, like I've said, yes, I will live stream through it, <clears throat> the thing is, I'm trying to think about the, how can I live while I'm doing my, uh, you know, transactions and everything without having to say, because here's the thing, how could I do it without showing that I just, you know, <laughs> sold or I just purchased or I just did whatever, which as far as I knew is uh, self-incriminating for lawsuits and all that stuff. So uh, maybe you guys can give me some ideas on how can I get away with that without, I guess, what, be alive without talking at all. Or if I sold, I just put my eyes up or look up or and then that way you know I sold um, but yeah I definitely would love to because at the end of the day I do want people not to lose it when drops start happening you know because that's anticipated those attacks are gonna happen the only thing I also am worried about is I don't want anybody to uh, infiltrate our stream and jump in and start pushing out in the most crucial moments stupid fud saying that oh everyone is selling and everything that you know those bots are there um and if that was to happen i don't want any people to get worried you know or take into that and i don't want to be the channel that help spread that uh poison to everyone else Pete, in your opinion, what are your brackets? High, high can AM, how high can AMC go, and how long will the squeeze last? Okay, um, Pete, I know that this is probably the most asked question, um, probably around all YouTube channels, um, and many people ask it just to see the person that they're dealing with, what their thoughts are, and you know, it, which is nothing wrong with that. Here's the thing: I'm possibly the only one to constantly keep saying no one really knows like the fact that you're setting up a bracket again you do that with day trades or with regular positions with this the only way you would know where your true brackets will be is from the beginning and when it starts because when i start seeing short position like short covering you're gonna see where it's moving because we don't know who, how many holds how much of short you know uh we know who is holding the stock we know who's uh according to the ortexes and whatever is being reported to us if you want to believe it is is how much is like we have obviously 130 million or 140 something million shares got short which i personally believe that is way higher than that but let's just go with that 
when they start covering that based on who is also going to be selling at those levels, whether, whatever, whether it's the 20, the 30, 40, $50, whatever, $80 level, if they start their covering and you can see that in the reports because the transparency rules are gone in effect and soon you're going to start seeing the short report, their positions on a monthly basis. And I'm looking forward for that to be even much better down the line, you know? So you're going to be asking like, okay, well, I, I can't wait if the squeeze starts today. I can't wait till next month until the shorts report their short position to believe to how it's going to go. Well, that's why at that point, I'm going to go with what the short interest and the short, you know, the Ortex is are reporting to us. I do have an account with Ortex. So therefore, I do look at it for my charting, for any of my technical analysis, for day trades. That's it. But I don't, I don't utilize it for AMC whatsoever in a way because I know that all the data is manipulated. Uh, but when we get to that bridge, I'm going to be mainly paying attention to shorts covering. When shorts starts covering, um, that's when I will start predicting where my brackets are going to be because at the end of the day, you hold gold. If gold is still not a, um, it's not a source or a mineral that has been invented here. I mean, let's say you go to space and you find some new mineral out on some other <laughs> asteroid or something and you bring it back to earth yeah it's very precious we know but what is it it doesn't have a market yet uh, once they make a market for it then they will prize it and that's when they prize it you know that's when you're like okay i want to sell this much of it um and that's what i believe my, my that's my output on amc is i have not or even gamestop uh same thing or even bbig or sundial at the end of the day i look at all these stocks and I see the craziness that's in them. And I can see that the true value of it, no one will know until you see the short starts covering and how much, like the volume itself plays a big role. How many people, I mean, if you start seeing 1 billion, 2 billion volume on a one day, then that means a lot of people obviously are selling. Um, now, will this last one day? Of course not. This thing has, you know how long they've been using synthetics and selling bull crap um f like empty shares how long they've been selling empty shares for they've been selling empty shares for god knows how long well, like over a year now um so i'm not gonna say that the squeeze will last over a year but it will last way more than one or two days or even three days like most likely uh anywhere between a week to two weeks that's what you're looking at that's minus suspensions and all that stuff but they will look to try to uh, make it as quick as possible because they did pass that regulation. I've talked to you guys about it in the channel where institutions now have after our trading. That's big. That means they're trying to ramp up how much throughout the day, throughout the night. They want to add more time so that they can clean up this process. They know it's a mess that needs a lot of cleanup and they're prepared to give out as much time to prepare as much. Hopefully that gives out my, uh, you know, my stance on the bracketology of AMC. Let's see. What's up, Alan? Yeah, well, better late than never, right? Uh, see, listen to Kenny's pool, guys. He's saying, stop watching clickbait. Fudfather and Uncle Fester. I guess that's another one. <laughs> you should be good from then on out. <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. let's see. IWM has a ton of FTDs due to this week. Uh, some are thinking it can light, uh, light a fuse. Uh, Pabloco, see, that's the thing. IWM is one of the ways that they can reach the feds through, if that makes any sense. You remember what we've been referring to. Um, and that's the thing. Uh, when when they when they stop this whole madness in the dark pool, then you will see a completely different market. <laughs> Kenny's pool says that uh, besides no one is watching that guy anymore. <laughs> okay, all I want to do is buy my son a new car. Uh, never say I don't have the money, son. Uh, well, I don't have any kids. I did raise, I did grow up in a, in, a, in, a, in a family where I was the oldest of my siblings. 
uh, and uh, Joe, I did, I did, I did do whatever for my youngers, my younger siblings, because my dad got sick at a younger age. He had to do a heart uh, valve transplant. Um, he was a Supreme Court, uh, Court judge. So that caused him to go to retirement out of Jordan, by the way. I'm from Jordan originally as a kid. And for him doing so, um, you know, he had to be down and not be able to work and do many things. So I had to step up to the plate at a much earlier age. Otherwise, it was trying to throw it all in my mom's lap. And my mom had his, her fair share of, uh, you know, sacrifices in this life for us so there's no way i'll ever be able to repair, repair her for sure um but there is a lot of truth to what you're saying uh alan you could just do your moves with a laptop you don't have to say what you did yeah i mean it's gonna be tough right to 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 do so but i i i, I i'll go i'll go with that i'll i'll do that And you can make moderators to block all the fud. See, I'm not that polished into that yet. Like, so I do have to get to that point where I can make moderators and, um, you know, how to invite people over to the stream and all that stuff. Once we get all that going, um, damn, watch out. It'll be a different game on YouTube. Okay, so Penny said, I don't know if y'all talked about this yet, but watch Rico's and AC Begum's last videos should calm your nerves a bit. And AB doesn't lie about anything. He's easily becoming one of my favorite YouTubers. Well, this means a lot to me coming from you, uh, Fool. So therefore, uh, thank you so much. You're the second person to say something about AC Begum's uh, last video. Um, I don't know Rico. This is the first time that I hear from you. Uh, I never heard of the name. So I definitely will watch AC uh, AMC's Bigums um, after because, again, I did say that if more people put, put that in chat, I will go ahead and watch. Um, let's see. I did, Alan. Uh, I remember when I said that I made it in the pre-market uh, of Friday? That's all I did with that, and I backed out of it, and I have different positions in different stocks now, you know. Um, as far as daily trades now, that's all I do is day trades um, because there's not much left into the market to do just day trades and try to uh, up my positions into my favorite stocks, the long-term ones. Um, we will know by the volume when squeeze is winding down. Yeah, that's one of the other ways as well that you know you start seeing the pressure going down on it. But another crucial point is the shorts covering because you gotta remember if the shorts didn't cover and the volume was at 20 billion, I don't care if it was at the $2 trillion and the shorts did not cover, that means whatever the price you see in front of you on that screen is 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 not is not it doesn't matter how big it is it's not worth uh it's not the right price that is worth your uh, shares because you know the shorts are not covered that means <laughs> it's worth a whole lot more da, 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 da. okay you think we going up this week and next week um I, I mean, as far as what I think, I think we're going to move up and down, uh, similar to last week, the week before that. Um, I gave you guys an, a, a, an overall big image from how I think the squeeze will happen. Um, I told you guys how they were able to prolong this squeeze all the way up till this point. You've, you've been part of this channel. You've, you've, you've heard it. Um, you can feel free to go through the past videos and you can see what I meant by that. But again, I've also showed you how they're able to get money while this thing is happening, while they're over leveraged, but can they get out of the way or, you know, continue this forever? Of course they can't because, you know, there was a lot of other pieces to the puzzle than just them connecting. I mean, the only way they were able to do this is because look, the feds is not doing their job. Can the feds continue not doing their job forever? Of course not, because if they continue down this road, America will become like Honduras at some point, as far as economy-wise, because 
you know, not size wise, but economy wise, because this is destroying the economy more and more and more. The fact that you have an economy that is acting like a drug addict or a fiend on drugs. What do you think? The longer they do this, at some point, we're going to like the, the, the this economy is going to start pulling out teeth. It's going to start pulling out skin. And at some point it's going to, you know, <laughs> just die, which is you know, on a bigger scale, is going to be uh, uh, equivalent to the country being completely ruined. So they have to start unloading their assets. Of course, the nine plus trillion worth of assets. Um, they have to start, um, you know, easing, obviously, stop the easing uh, program and stop putting out so much money, while the, which is similar to pu pushing the gas, while in the same time pumping the brakes by ra raising the hikes. I mean, this is just the way for them to, for them personally to make more money, for the federal entity to have a lot more money in its bank, you know, when is all this said and done. So I did say from before, guys, that ultimately they're going to pay for this thing from within this thing. Uh, some people, some of us are going to make a lot of money and they're going to make it on the backs of the ones that couldn't last until uh, the day of judgment. You know, and that's just ultimately what it comes down to. Of course, hedge funds will pay, institutes will pay, some will completely evaporate. Um, but ultimately, they're going to pay for this thing from within this thing. And that's why they've been prolonging it for this long. So they can bring in more and more people and, more, and get more money from these people. And then when it comes to it, um, you know, if the people decide that they want much less for their uh, shares, then guess who ultimately is the ultimate winner? I think GME is going to squeeze like Tesla. What are your thoughts? Um, okay. Now, here's the thing, Danette. I see a squeeze like Tesla. I don't see it being ever evaluated like Tesla. Um, let me let me just face it. And again, as, uh, and I have a huge position in GME. You know this. Mentioned it on other channels. Here's the thing. Again, there's realistic, and then there's what I would love it to be. Tesla is not only the future, but it's an innovative company. And it has so many things to it that's fundamentally great on its end. Uh, Tesla, and also in my opinion, is so undervalued in long term. Now, in the short term, it can fall. So I, I did mention that I could see it when the crash happens. I could see it falling down to you know the $400, $300 level maybe um, for just a short amount of time. But there's no way I see GME being at the $800, $900, $1,000, $2,000, $1,200 a share on a daily base, like just, just this normal uh, fundamentals. Because it's, it's just, there's like the company itself is, there's nothing too, too crazy special about it. There's so many like it. You could say the same thing about Tesla, but Tesla is the leader in that sector. Um, and they're always bringing out something new. Anything else is always following them. You know, they're following all the other competitors are following them. If it wasn't for Tesla, we would not be talking about electric cars today. Ford would not be making a, an electric division. Mercedes would not be making an electric division. Uh, Ford, uh, all, all car makers will not be making uh, electric divisions. And Neo would not be around. Let's see, Alan says, shorts didn't even put a dent in covering back in June. Uh, can you imagine if they really cover? Yeah, that, see, there you go. That's what I'm telling you is if they didn't even do any of that back then, and I do think that back then uh, they personally possibly had a lot of calls on, on, on waiting to go uh, in the money, and they made a lot of money because especially here's the thing. The difference between us and them is – they have the advantage of knowing the ins and the outs. Why do I believe this? Because the DOJ just came out saying that there is a probe that all these guys were basically talking to each other, doing swap deals and all that stuff. So if they were doing that, then the least, the least shady thing they can do is see what's underneath the hood or what's underneath that pot, the, underneath that lid. Um, and they know the ins and outs. So if, if I knew, if you tell me right now, that today 
algorithmically or however way you want to tell me. If I'm an institutional investor and you're telling me, hey, on this given day, it's going to basically start rising and you start seeing the rise. But if you knew, if I knew that it's going to go up to this level and you don't as retail, that's the difference. Because a lot of people that were now, I was one of them that had so many even option calls, not just shares. The people who had shares did not sell. Very few percentage did. But even the people that had calls on that play did not sell at those levels. And just majority of them did not sell. Take it from me because I was there back then. And the crazy part is that they were all anticipating, and I was one of them, that is going to continue to go up because, again, shorts did not cover. And the price suddenly got to the 7.4 and then dumped. And ever since then, it's just been on a uh, descending uh, you know, movement. Now, the retail, I believe, at that time had information basically regarding this to this. And they knew that this was not going to be the squeeze, most likely. And they went ahead and made a lot of calls, made a lot of money, made it seem like it went up, where the market makers, in this case, made majority of the money because they didn't even have to hedge for all these crazy calls or everything. I mean, they did ramp up. It did get, have a gamma. But if it got to that price and it did not make the shorts cover, because remember, we hovered in that price zone in the 60s at least for over a week, and then it would drop to the 50s for over a month. Um, it didn't go down to the 30s until like, you know, late, what was it, September? Yeah, uh, even uh, until November. So if the if the if the shorts did not cover then, why would anyone think that they will co have to cover at 20 or at 22 or 24? Someone mentioned in the chat earlier. Um, it, it's it's you what you just said, Alan, is spot on. So this is how you know what your stock is worth, guys. <laughs> if that if they didn't cover and it went to that price, um, what do you think your value or your stock is worth? It's definitely more than 74. Again, I'm not financial advisor. Now that I'm telling you to sell at 74 or after 74 or under 74 or whatever the case may be, don't get me arrested. Okay. I hope the next rate hike is sooner than expected with a 0.50 hike. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that th this is what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, he did leave a window open for them saying that we are not afraid to even get more hawkish if we need to be. It's like, dude, don't flex right now on the screen and try to make it seem like you're on top of it and everything. I mean, you just started your whole meeting with uh, inflation is much higher than anticipated and it's very risky. And for the last year and a half, you've been saying it's transitory. It's nothing. While dumb money has been telling you, uh, no, it's not transitory. <laughs> but you didn't want to listen. I wonder why. Who Who was pushing all the strings in the back. Um, you didn't miss much, Alan. You didn't miss much. Uh, the talk was the, the, that the fact that it's the same old stuff that Powell comes out to say, making everybody feel like, you know, that he's on top of his job. It's just formalities, uh, but nothing different. Nothing different. He said that, you know, he's not afraid to get even more hawkish if there needs to be but they don't see why they should start unloading their assets. That's where the problem for me is. You know, uh, you can hike up whatever you want to hike up, but again, if your assets are nine plus trillion and you still have this whole easy money policy, um, and you know, everybody, the market is still getting access to all those trillions of dollars that you're pumping out daily, it, it, it makes no difference. Yeah, trying to calm everyone down again. And they again, they utilize that throughout today's trading session. Now, what we're looking for tomorrow, guys, as far as AMC, we're looking for them to cover that $15.5 strike price that it went well above it. It was closed at $15.80. So therefore, that $15.5 had a lot of call options on it. And it was the second most called options that was on top of it, you know? Uh, and yeah, Danette, I'm coming to that. 
So the call options that ended in that 15 and a half, they were not paid for today, obviously. Nobody, the market maker obviously did not buy all those shares or they normally would have to hedge for them in advance. So we didn't see those receipts in so far until yet. So tomorrow is a good day that you see that. You don't see that, then your FTD list just got a whole lot bigger. Um, as far as BBIG's rumor, okay. So, okay. So I heard this rumor that apparently Friday night or Friday on the, on the before the end of business day, that BBIG, remember that BBIG started getting like moving, moving, moving on Friday. And then suddenly at that, uh, I think it was it closed at 340 or 330 something, uh, 347 or something like that. But uh, sorry, 250 something, 247. Yeah, 247, 246. Um, now I do know that they wanted, look at this rumor guys. I do know that they did not, by any way or form or shape, want the stock to close above 260. Did mention the numbers, remember on last Friday when I made a, a video, I did mention what they are talking about, uh, what they didn't want to, like the numbers they didn't want to get to and they didn't want the stock to drop under. So <laughs> they did not want it to close above the 250 range because there was like, I think it was like 45 or 49,000 calls going in uh, uh, going in the money if it went above that. And that and the and the momentum and the buying on BBIG have started going up on Friday. And I remember personally seeing that toward the end of the close, it was supposed to go ahead and move. I mean, it was attacked crazy on Friday, but it was moving and it was, it was supposed to close above that. Now, what I what the rumor says is that apparently toward the last, you know, I don't know how long, but the last uh, moments of the trading session that the orders were not going to, uh, you know, toward the price, toward the lit market, um, at least the percent of them that is starting, is supposed to be going there from lit to, uh, from, from brokers straight to lit exchange. And they were, they were basically stopped or routed somehow and they continued this is exactly why you probably seen that um four to five percent rise after market um, and they continued them then and this is probably why you see the 23 percent uh gain today is possibly from the continuation of all the sales that they were uh, stopping throughout last week and they're just scattering them up throughout this week and you seen today was the first trading session. So that's just a rumor on it. Now, as far as who I heard it from, you know, I always told you guys, I'll always tell you everything. Now, here's the thing. Originally, when we moved from Jordan as a kid to the States, we moved to New York. We're in Brooklyn, New York. So I was in Brooklyn, New York before we moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. So I still have family there. So I go down to New I go up to New York all the time. It is up from where I'm at. I'm in the Midwest. That one is up north. So after the June of 2021 run-ups that I had, that that amazing uh, run-up that I had with the AMC calls, you know, I went to New York and I started looking for some business potential things to do over there. Uh, why I also went down to LA because I just love LA uh, to do to look for some things down there and I have some family down there too. So I, when I was up there, I was able to get to un, to know some cool people that actually work in the Wall Street uh, industry and you know connections. See, here's the thing: once you once you guys once you make some money, take it from me. The first thing you want to do is go after influence. You want to make some connections. You want to make some people. Uh, or some friends in that industry that you're trying to be in. So I see that this is the industry that I'm obviously in. So therefore, I went ahead to that area. And in that in that in that realm, I would say, you know, at night in Manhattan, there's a lot of clubs, there's a lot of parties, and there's a lot of things going on. Um, and you're bound to find what you're looking for if you're looking for something straight. Now, I can't mention, um, obviously, anything as far as people's names or who are these friends, who they work for or whatnot. But 
you know, when you become friends with people and, you know, you invite them over, you get a VIP table for them and, you know, you get to know them even better and you contact them on uh, St. Patrick's Day and Thanksgiving and all that stuff, you know, you're like, hey, okay, you seen that? Yeah, that's crazy. Get their info, intel about AMC, get their, get their points, their viewpoints on other plays and stuff like that, just to talk, not financial advice. They begin to tell you stuff. So like when I talk to them, you know, before about what they think of, you know, BBIG, they, you know, they're like, hey, uh, this, this, this thing is good. This thing is not, you know, it's a cool stock, whatever. It's going to take a long time, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean that they're 100% correct, guys. They're also in the market just like us. But they have got my attention when they said something about those orders not going in just to prevent the stock price from going above that particular strike price so that the market maker doesn't get screwed because apparently he did not hedge or did not go and hedge for those positions i don't know what to tell you guys but um it seems very sus to me because 24 percent 26 percent rise in the pre-market is normally a rip in the market when the market opens you know that means you're gonna rip after that and for them and I've been mentioning to you guys that there's crazy price suppression happening without even speaking uh, to to these friends of mine like without even speaking to them I've been already telling you guys all these things about like if you looked like in the past weeks you can view the last videos I've been saying look at GME I even put pictures up in the community tab saying like look at this look look at the incoming and the outgoing look at the level two data look how many shares or how many buying how much buying is coming in and really how much buying is going through um, so what they told me does seem like it's uh, it does 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 make sense and to be totally honest it does feel like it makes some sense uh, to me now is it 100% true we don't know you know they themselves uh, you know don't know 100% but this is just like I said the rumor and where I'm telling the reason why I'm telling I mean I could just told you this without saying where it's coming from uh, because at the end of the day I told you guys from the beginning that whatever I, I don't have filters so I always say whatever is here I put it it, it just comes straight out or whatever is in my heart too it comes out so it does it does make some sense but all the crime is in those dark pools so that's the overall route to this so hopefully that makes any sense to you guys alan welcome back to bbig <laughs> alan says i hope the sc is watching this place they're watching everything they've been watching everything i mean again we're watching everything and we're not it's not our job uh, it's not our job to, 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 to track this, but we're doing it. Imagine what they, it's their job to do, and they're not doing any of it. It's not because they don't want to do it. Um, it's, it's just when, when, when your higher ups are giving you specific instructions, you just have to follow it. It's like a soldier. If you have a bad general and the general is giving you bad uh, rules, or what, like his treatment is terrible. At the end of the day, you gotta follow the rules. That's what they teach you in, the, you know, in the army. So like, you just have to follow your, like your orders. Um, and that's what I think is unfortunately is happening is that they're just given instruction to look the other way because there's just too much going on. You know, that that can't be explained to them. They just have to follow the orders. This is why I think buying calls is pointless. They control the price. Yeah. See, there you go, Danette. This is how this is how they make more and more money off of calls because calls. Okay, the option link uh, link is constantly has constantly been an issue to them. You know, ever since the the GameStop saga happened and all these things, that has been nothing but a, a an issue to them because you're talking about so many people, not just institutional. You know, people first were only talking about taking a position by buying stocks in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in whatever stock, you know. But now you got people who are talking about, you know, like since January of 2021, they're just YOLOing in on options. And imagine if a price goes up like GameStop from 3 $4 over to $480. And imagine if you have 100 or 200 option calls on that. Um, 
there you, there you go as, as far as being a millionaire uh, for life. You know, it's just that simple. And imagine if you have millions of people doing the same thing. Who's going to pay for all that? Again, the game was not set up. Their whole spider web was not set up to endure all that. So therefore, now they were led to <laughs> having to manipulate the whole system so that they don't get burnt from the system or get buried from the system. Um, that doesn't mean that calls will go away. Um, it means that now uh, you're literally like getting calls. It's like walking through a landmine. Um, did you see the hardcore bar coding on HYMC? Yeah, I also see it in Sundial all the time. I see it in BBIG. I won't be I won't be surprised if, if BBIG is probably the most uh, bar coded stock of, all, of uh, uh, ever. Uh, yeah, Danette, it is sad, but yeah, this is the world that we live in. Queen Kong, the SEC is watching, but they aren't doing any significance, any significant that will bring uh, about transparency and help retail investors. Um, yeah, well, yeah, they are watching for sure, but we don't know. Like, again, we, they, they, they're, they're told to go with the program, get with the program until the sign or the signal is given, being given. When they're given the signal, trust me, everything will go crazy. And it will be correlating to all the, like, you know, on all sides. Every side will be uh, moving according to the to the signal. Like, the, you, you'll see, guys. You'll see how it will work out. Man, who okay, cares? Over. Was seen. Uh, will all synthetics uh, be covered? Um, of course, that's something that, I mean, here's the thing, as far as synthetics, there's, there's a lot of shares that are hedged for, because here's where, here's where the confusion happens. And I think Lou wanted to explain this to his people, but I don't think he did a, 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 a very easy job. So I'll simplify it here. Every share that is purchased would have to be dealt with. That's bottom line now real synthetic doesn't matter now there's many other shares that are normally or supposedly hedged for like purchased or created by the market maker so like when you go and reason for that is, is because when you buy options let's say they are in the money or at the money uh range the option the option chain the way it works is that the market maker when you buy those that are at the money not way out of the money you know, if it's way out of the money, they don't even deal with this. Like they just let it go because it's already considered a a, a, a big gamble and 90% is going to be a loss. So if it's at, at the money or in the money, what the he, what, what the market maker does is, and the broker, they go ahead and hedge for that position in case the price closes above it, which means that those shares will have to be purchased. So those hedged for all those, I don't see anybody like will have to cover them because the market maker or the broker will automatically uh, get rid of all that. And because of the people that are buying those options that originally the broker had to hedge for or the market maker had to hedge for, then all those people that bought those options will be selling them. They're not going to be buying them as shares. You know, they're not going to be exercising them as uh, stock because at that point you're talking about when, when when the stock is like, let's say, and I know that you're referring to that, will they buy all the shares as in that's after the squeeze or in this during the squeeze. During the squeeze, the stocks are going to be so high. So if you bought a strike price at $17, $16, and tomorrow it ripped to $100, Let's say the market maker will buy shares for those calls that you made to hedge for them in case you exercise. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to, I don't think anybody's going to exercise at that point because again, to exercise just one of those, that means you have to buy all those shares, like a hundred shares of that option or that, you know, strike price that you bought. So you have to buy 100 shares at the price of $17. 
and which is you know you do the math on this um which is a thousand and seven hundred bucks so you buy a hundred of those and then you forfeit your premium that you paid on the option so nobody in their right mind is gonna sell, is gonna exercise what they're gonna do in that case is sell the option they're just gonna sell it and that right there would make the market maker buy it so that they don't have to buy shares to hedge for that, which means buying more shares into the uh, market, which means those shares were there, but then they go away. Hopefully that made any sense. Uh, Alan, make sure put in the comments for the April 18th. Yeah, everyone. Um, put it put in as as Alan said put in the comments for the April 18th um, do you think that if meme stocks rip to five or six digits um, that they will halt trading and cancel orders to reset the price like they did with nickel on LME okay um, here's the thing Queen uh, Kong if it gets to those high crazy things let's say amc got to fifty thousand. okay B don't even look at the nightmare that <laughs> the options nightmare that will be at that point um because nothing can pay those options out i mean you're talking about people becoming uh for just with 50 options they at that price or 100 or 10 or 20 options at that price they could probably come out with a hundred million dollars uh, just one person so that's just a nightmare that's besides all the shares that are out there so if there's billions of shares like 50 billion or 60 billion shares or what whatever the case may be you multiply each that by you multiply that figure by 50,000. I know not everybody's going to wait until then. Uh, only the diamond hands will, but hypothetically speaking, if it gets to that point, um, <laughs> Lion says I would get 100 million. <laughs> now we know what you're holding. Um, so ideally, if it gets to that point, you if you want to just multiply thinking that, hey, let's say there was only 1 billion shares out there, just making it easy. Um, and you have to multiply that by 50,000 each share. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who's going to fund that. Um, it's, it's, I, I can definitely see a complete suspension happening for sure. Um, I could see them not letting it be or stick at that price levels at, 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 at any given point. I see it when it gets to the five and six digits. I see like you know sporadic rises and like you know just quick rises and then dumping back down into a suspension um also you have to look at that point at that point what the overall market is i did mention to you guys that there's three circuit breakers for the overall market if the s p 500 falls in value for seven percent or lower uh, somebody in the chat can go ahead and look at those levels for me again i mean uh, you know, I forget it. You can look it up on Google and see it easily. But uh, just put in what are the uh, the circuit breakers for uh, the market when it falls. You know, when when the market is crashing. But I do know the first one is triggered by seven percent. So if the S and P five hundred falls seven percent lower than the previous trading business day, then they will trigger a market wide halt on the whole market. Uh, for I think as long as 15 or 30 minutes. Now, if it goes up to 13%, then they do another one for I think an hour or two hours. And then if it goes to 30% and above or 33% and above, then automatically it uh, they shut it for the rest of the day. Um, that's, that's, that's something that you also guys have to keep in mind, that the suspension could come from something different. It's not just coming from uh you know like the amc being suspended it could be from a suspended market overall um, because if the market is crashing then you're gonna have a suspension there and that could help the aid them suspend amc indirectly because they know how many people are crazy about it 
let's see. Uh, did you know the SEC is trying to increase the accredited investor limit uh, from 1 million to 10 million? Fun fact of the day, I did not do that. Uh, way to find that out. What do you think, Danette? What do you think that's, uh, how do you feel about that news? Um, look at line say I would get a hundred million. Yeah. Uh, with my share as well. Okay. <laughs> like we know with the taxes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I was not. I was not farting. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting messages on the phone. Uh, friends telling me they're coming over, so you know, wrapping things up. You're welcome, Kong. What do I think happened from Al uh, to to Al from Boston? Is possibly what could happen to me. Uh, if I continue bringing out this this narrative to you guys, because again, I've seen that most YouTube channels are, um, although that they're trying to be as real to you as possible, that they tone it down to as far as just talks. For me, you got you know as far as you you've seen from me so far, you see that I don't have a filter. Like I will say what I want to say about Jerome. I will say what I want to say about the SEC and, you know, the Congress and all that stuff. And I will say it as it is. Um, and that's the thing. So I personally think that at some point they might, they might come out and say, Hey, stop putting out this thing about the dark pool. Eventually more and more people will tur get turned on to this channel. And eventually more and more people will start talking about that issue even more and more and concentrate mainly on that issue. And then next thing you know, you know, they'll have to come and find the source and that'll be me. As, as, as far as uh, as far as the video challenge now, it's uh, it, it will officially go to like they will they will go ahead and, and reach John Wick. Hopefully he doesn't tell him anything uh, about, you know, oh, no, the first one to say that was AB. <laughs> Yes, please look up that info. It's very, very, uh, it's very nice to know. So that way, when you're in the middle of mayhem, in the squeeze, because you know your emotions are going to be all over the place. You're going to be seeing numbers flying up, down, like this, moving up, like that, move up and down. Um, you, 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 you. The least amount of surprises are the best amount. Is the best thing for you throughout those times. You do not want something to happen where like you know let's say you didn't know about those uh you know market circuit breakers and it, something happens and the whole market is shut at that point everything bad is going to go through your mind but that info but at least if you know that and that happens then then at least you have an immediate explanation to what is happening you know just just so that you stay informed because you don't want something to happen and it's like what what is going on like uh, am i screwed you know, I know that rush feeling. Uh, but yeah, uh, sorry, I, I will get back to, yeah, getting back to Al from Boston. So yes, he did obviously put that. I mean, I, I've had my thing about it. And I said this before, like the way that it just suddenly happened and the guy did not even come out or even tweeted anything in saying, I, I mean, you guys seen so many scandals happen in, 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 throughout our life, right? Like so many scandals happen from big celebrities or big things where you see news anchors sleeping with their uh, co-workers and then it gets found out. And like that that guy that was on, uh, I forgot which show it was. Was it The View or not? Whatever. whatever. Or CNBC. There was a guy that was apparently, he was, you see him every day. If, I, if you see his picture, you would know him. But apparently I remember happening, it was like last year or the year before that, where he got fired from his job because apparently he was sleeping with his co-worker. And apparently she went on to explain how he was 
like anally abusing her and whatnot and it looked really bad on him and it was terrible so obviously he he got completely cut but he came out normally they still come out and do a public like, like you know apology and they say i'm sorry i see my mistake blah 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 and then they sail into the sunset this guy did not nothing you didn't hear anything like 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 the, okay a per case was presented to him, against him and nothing nothing came out uh nothing came out about him like you know and from him to say that i apologize because he had a big following so that he could have easily came out and said uh you know is true or false or whatnot at least said something according to the allegation or in, in, in regards to the allegation let's see do you remember when they shut down trey and tmi midstream uh, i remember when they even did it to uh i don't remember trey midstream honestly i don't remember what that was like i remember when they did it to matt cores and he literally went on a different platform i think it was twitter or something um pleading his case crying to his subscribers to make like you know to like raise the raise awareness over the issue and <laughs> next thing you know uh, the next day he was back up and running he's like thanks you guys i'm back i'm good and you know moon gang <laughs> um queen kong didn't he sexually harass someone on twitter yeah uh there were threads about it yeah he that that's what, what came up about it okay mardeman uh, welcome to the chat did you know there, there are 379 paper shorts per ounce of silver. Well, uh, no, I just now know it. Uh, sounds like that TV show, American Greed. <laughs> Lion, <laughs> I think you're you're definitely the uh, the the the, <laughs> the the most the most the most funny in the in the, in the chat or in this group for sure in our group. Uh, Matt Lauder, yes, King Kong, that's the name of that guy. I think he was the guy you're talking about. Yes, that's exactly what I was talking about. He, he was, he was, he was, he was on TV, on daily TV, like every day for the past, I don't know, God, given how many years. Um, and suddenly out of nowhere that came out and, you know, it was a crazy story. It was very embarrassing too. Like, you know, the, the fact that she came out with all the details and everything, I mean, kudos to her for having the bravery and the, courage to come out and do such thing because you know and once you're a known figure it's tough to walk around and you know like the idea of you thinking about people looking at you a certain way in regards to the situation um you know that was kudos to her for that but i don't know how he can walk around you know um or continue to be around um you know, and not be obviously in the mainstream no more. Maybe he'd have to move out of the country or something to establish a new life somewhere else and hopefully learn from that mistake. But that was huge. Uh, but at least him, he, at least he came out and apologized. What happened to, uh, and yeah, and uh, it was, it's not Chris Cuomo, no, uh, Alan, but yeah, Chris Cuomo is another example as well. Like, you know, the, all these guys come out and they address it. They say something, not just, you know, disappear. Hopefully the guy is still alive. <laughs> Hopefully he didn't get killed. Uh, because he made some legitimate arguments in regards to the high numbers on on some people's brackets. You see what I'm saying? SEC creates this rule as a gatekeeper to prevent regular people from becoming rich who have one million in the bank account, let alone ten million. For example, if XRP is a security, I would not be able to buy it. Oh, okay. Now I see what you're talking about. Good to know. Well, also, you got to remember that with, with the fact that our inflation numbers may never really recover down to the 2% that is sought after by the feds, um, you know, we're heading into times where you remember at some point when a dollar, actually just one dollar had a value, you know, over the years. I remember when I was in high school, 
the dollar was a lot. In fact, the dollar was my allowance. Uh, that's what my parents gave me every day in the morning uh, to go to school, like, you know, in the early parts of my high school, because like after my sophomore year, that's when my dad, you know, fell ill. And, you know, he had to redo his whole, uh, you know, heart valve replacement thing. So, because he originally did it one in 1996, and that's what causes retirement. But then it got worse. I think after every 10 or 15 years, you have to do any fresh ups or clean ups to it, and uh, or something. I think because he used to smoke cigarettes a lot, so he basically had had it like clogged up or something. So they had to do a CAT scan to go in. Anyways. He couldn't work at all after that, like not even his part time job or anything. So after that, I had to pick up full time uh, from everything. But nevertheless, when I was, you know, getting still an allowance from my parents, it was a dollar. And that dollar really was a lot. Like you could do a lot. You could buy a can of pop, Hawaiian punch uh, and, you know, some like some chips or some uh, ramen noodles, uh, which was enough until you get back home and you eat whatever mom made. Um, but it was get, getting you by throughout that day. You know what I'm saying? Um, now you throw a dollar to a, even to a homeless person, that's nothing. You know, they look at you. I mean, back then they were asking any change. Now you got homeless people who are coming to you. You got about a, a few dollars on you. You know, like they literally will ask you, you got five or 10 on you. And it's like, damn, like what? <laughs> Some people out there have to work damn near an hour to get that much, almost an hour. Um, and, and you're just coming out to ask for it. So it's, 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 it's crazy. So yeah, I can see where inflation will cause things to be so much higher where the value of the million, what once once was, wow, a million, million was a lot. You can see a lot of it being not that much anymore. You're gonna be like, okay, now it's three million or four million or five million that is the amount that is needed to, to get to really, really, really wealthy status or a comfortable status. Uh, so real talk, when will the hedge funds throw the white flag? Uh, there's war, inflation, Janet Yellen and Joe Biden living in La La Land. And it, uh, if this rate, no middle class will be able to uh, pay uh, and lower class. Yeah, uh, Lion, I've, I, I, it's, the whole thing, as I'm telling you, is whenever this reverse repo and repo transaction starts falling in value, when you start seeing them doing down, like, you know, from the one, one trillion point, you know, one trillion seven hundred billion area, and you see it falling down, 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 and perhaps eventually get down underneath the trillion, because it eventually will have to go underneath the trillion uh, per day. When you see that stuff, that's when you know uh, that they need to like, you know, that's when you know that, the, you know, that it's going to move the opposite direction, that they're going to throw the white flag because they don't have enough money coming in to support them holding their short positions, you know? So when the dark pool is dealt with, as we said, April 18th is when the comments are due in. If, if it all goes through as we, as we, as we hopefully predict that it will be, or supposedly it goes through, then we're looking at different fundamentals at that point but anyone that will tell you lion anyone that will tell you like oh march 3rd or march 7th or give you a day again it's either that they have insider information and they're not going to come out to publicly say it if they do have it because they will incriminate everyone else and that's not going to happen or they most likely are telling you crap something that they're throwing from their head uh, because again, there's no such thing as them throwing a white flag if they have everything they need to get by every day. Um, logically, this would should have been over back in January of 2021 or even before that. Um, less logically, you know, because that's just the way it is. But ever since then, that's when the when they shut took that buy button away. Uh, when they took that buy button away from the uh, equation and that weekend that followed those two three days off they were able to come up with a new system to try to fund this bull crap and i believe this is the system they came up with through dark pool straight to getting money from the feds 
through the dark pool and the banks and everybody in that range makes money. This guy, the broker makes money, so he's okay with doing it. Market maker is making a lot of money, so obviously he's okay with doing it. Then you have the banks making money because of course they're fund funding this. It's going through them, so they're okay with it. And then you got the Federal Reserve who is piling up in their assets and making money on the reverse part of things. When they do the reverse repo, they make a 03 to 3.3 percent based on whatever term they agreed on um and so obviously since they're making money so they were okay with this thing so if ever since everybody was happy except the retail investor in this case because we are their indirect enemy whether we like it or not because we're trying to take what they're taking so not that we are cynic, cyn, uh, cynically trying to take what they're t what they're taking. It's because it's rightfully ours, while they are the ones who are cynically uh, or insidiously taking our uh, gains. So that's that's the case as far as breaking that out. Um, Kenny, good night, brother. Have a safe and blessed night. Thank you so much for the, all the visual effects and the emojis. Uh, I'm about to wrap up as well. Um, but before I do so, I'm going to read the, a, a few last comments as well. Um, Alan said, Kumo is suing for firing him for having a relationship with some high-level girl. Yeah, I remember when he, the relationship that he had, I forgot who it was, it was, the story was that they did not share, was it the fact that they did not share it with the public uh, and it just became a problem or something like that? But, you know. He can sue. They most likely will deal with this away from, uh, you know, the media and the courts. They will give him a number, give him a job, or they will give him a higher number to just keep his mouth shut. And most likely he'll take it. Um, Al also had his own server with subscribers paying like $70 a month. So no word on what happened to any of that. Yeah, I remember when he was uh, pushing the idea of... Uh, you know, people paying so they can get a direct from the uh, let exchange, um, so they can get direct um, data so that they're not manipulated by the level two data that is being pumped by the uh, market itself. Um, and it's going to cost a lot, so people had to pay that much to be strictly straight on that, and they will get straight news. So it was right after when he made that system and started talking about that system is when the craziness happened with him and all that i mean that was crazy man i mean the setup the way that it happened he's abusing some chicks on twitter or who follow him or follow other people um, it was just too much too out in the open it's kind of like you know that too easy to be true um i don't know maybe the guy might have been that predator that they you know that is portrayed to be or it could have been that he needed to go out because he was bringing in something that is reasonably doable, but since the forces, whoever they might be, know that it's true, but if that was to happen, then there's something that they cannot handle, so therefore they had to take care of the person. Maybe that's the case. Dinette, thank you. Forks, uh, yeah, thanks for the punch. Hopefully that's for the Fed and for the market maker and for the brokers. Uh, thank you for sharing and spending time with us. Well, uh, I wouldn't have it any. I would have, I would have it no other way. Uh, you know, it's it's been an honor and always an honor to come and be with you guys. Uh, I look forward to the day that we might have like what uh, thousands of watchers to the stream or subscribers or whatever. But until that day comes. We're gonna be very happy. We're gonna do what we're gonna do, um, and we're gonna continue to pump out what we see and what I see, and we're gonna keep giving each other information. See, that's like I said again. What I love about this community is, like, people come out with valuable info, such as the net, um, and 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 each one has something to present to the table, and each one brings something to offer that none of us might know. No one knows everything, you know. So what I know with what you know, we put it together and obviously that can make the dream come true. Um, and that's what I care about the most. So even if it's a community or a subscriber list of three or five or 10 or 100 or 
1,000 or 25,000 or whatever, a million. It's, 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 they're all going to mean the same to me. So uh, much love, guys. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comment section. We'll get to them. We'll do a live again soon. Um, you know, I'm like I told you before, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Till that step, whenever that comes, when it comes, we're going to be together. And hopefully we get to party and enjoy our lives after. Much love, AB Investments.